Now joining us to talk about that is the, and the future of tourism in Cuba is Christopher Baker. He is a travel writer and photographer. He's also the author of six travel books on Cuba, including a new guidebook called Moon Cuba that's coming out soon. Christopher joins us now from Palm Springs, California. Christopher, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. As uh, one of the lucky ones who's been able to visit Cuba on a number of occasions, I have to ask you, I've been to the marina and seen all those ships with U.S. flags. We've talked about the number of people legally traveling to Cuba. What do you think? How many people illegally visit Cuba each year? Well, that's difficult to say. We do know that 98,000 visited with people-to-people -people programs last year. However, uh, the last figures that were published by the Cuban government vis-a-vis -vis illegal travel was many, many, many years ago. We were talking about 30,000 a year then. It is far less these days because, very importantly, every U.S. citizen currently has the right to go to Cuba as long as they participate on a people-to-people -people licensed program such as I lead for National Geographic or Motor Discovery. Those are motorcycle tours, for example. Interesting. In your travels there, and you've been there how many times? Close to 70, I've read. What have you heard from the Oof, Cuban well, people? Do they believe that U.S. policies have crippled their economy for this past generation? Well, it, it's certainly true that the Cuban perspective is that the U.S. embargo has not done them any favors. And I think it's very disingenuous for those who support the embargo to point a finger at the communist regime for all its failings and say, look, the communist regime doesn't work. It's been an economic disaster when, at the same time, the very purpose of the embargo is to try and bring down the economy. So the Cubans themselves do blame uh, America's embargo for many of their problems. It's very important to understand that one of the rationales for Obama's move yesterday is to support the nascent private economy mm -hmm. that Raul Castro himself is trying to sponsor. And that's exactly where tourism can help, or at least legal travel to Cuba, because almost everybody who is currently engaged in private enterprise is in the service industry, private right. restaurants, uh, private room rentals, etc. Uh, those people also stand to make the most money by vacationers, because tips make up a big portion of their additional income when you talk about an income that was, a decade ago, about $8 a month. What are your impressions of Cuba? What do people that have not been there need to know about this impact in the thawing of relations? What that could mean to people in Cuba, what it could mean on the U.S. travel industry? Well, I think, firstly, it's very important to understand that Given five decades of presentation of the Cuban government as being this kind of awful regime, uh, there's an impression that a communist nation is going to be dour, et cetera, and that given the blockade, that Cubans are not going to welcome Americans. Actually, the opposite is true. Cubans adore American visitors. They really wholeheartedly welcome the possibility of a flood or certainly an increase of American tourists, as you witnessed yesterday with the reception in Havana, the church bells were ringing, mm -hmm. and people were out on the street really um, joyfully expressing their hope that they're going to see many, many more uh, Americans coming, uh, spending money in private restaurants, in private homes. Almost every taxi driver in Cuba right now is self-employed, leasing vehicles from the state. We can assist the nascent economy to make it thrive and help make Cuba the entity that we hope that it will be. You know, you make a great point because going down there, when people see you, they come up and ask you, are you Italian, are you German? Then you say you're from the U.S. and they want to practice their English. People there make a big distinction between U.S. people and the U.S. government. With that said, what do you think airlines, cruise lines, that those industries are thinking about as this opens up? Because people are going to be welcome there in a very warm fashion once this happens. Very true. And I'll, I'll answer that question in a second. I want to give you an anecdote on the first point you made about um, how Cubans feel towards Americans. I was actually photographing at a demonstration in front of what will become the U.S. Embassy in Havana. Mm -hmm. And it was during the Elian Gonzalez crisis, and the Cubans were denouncing America, and I was amongst them. And they said, where are you from? I said, America. And they went, yay, we love you. Uh, so to answer your question on airlines, cruise ships, hoteliers, they're all chomping at the bit. But it's very important to remember that the Obama changes yesterday do not lift the travel restrictions. Right. The embargo is still in place. Hotel corporations, airline corporations, cruise corporations cannot go to Cuba. They won't be able to do so under the new changes that have been suggested by Obama. That will require uh, an act 
of Congress. However, I think the most important thing about what happened yesterday vis-a-vis -vis travel is not just that it, it uh, increased the possibility for most Americans to travel under general licenses, but it was the, uh, it lent a shoulder to open the door in Congress, particularly to lift all travel restrictions per se, so that airline companies, cruise companies, et cetera, can fulfill their ambition of being able to support a new Cuba by trading with Cuba. And clearly, all this is, is being done to help Cuba, help its citizens. But what about the reverse? Could this be a bump for certain US destinations, or do regular Cubans not have the money to travel to come here? Well, it's very true. The vast majority of Cubans are very hard up, of course. Um, however, what I am seeing, and I've seen more change in Cuba in the last two years than I've seen in 20 years of going there, in terms of the amount of money that's now in the hands of Cubans. You see young people driving Audis, et cetera, and there is a great increase now that Raul has lifted all travel restrictions for Cuba. There's a great increase in the number of Cubans who are showing their desire to travel by asking for visas. My fiance, who is actually a Cuban living in Havana, is leaving for Uruguay in two weeks to go teach violin there, but she was recently refused a visa by the US government. And in fact, most of the friends that I know that have the resources, they do have the money to travel, to visit friends and family in the USA. Most of them are actually being denied. So there is a nascent middle class, I think that's what we can call it. Mm -hmm. Many of these people drawing their income from the private enterprise system or from tourism. Uh, you, you mentioned quite correctly, Sean, that the tips go a long way to fueling the new middle class. Uh, and there's a lot of aspirations amongst Cubans to explore a world that they've not been able to explore for five decades. Christopher, I could talk to you about this for some time, the Paladores, the wonderful people there, but uh, we're out of time now. But uh, you give us great insight to what could be happening there, an exciting time, certainly interesting. Thank you very much.